Yeah, there you go. Good, good, good. Hey, good morning. So um, it's ten oh one. We 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 could begin, but um, when did Bill Messner say he's going to be done? He's the one for me. He said he should be done any minute. Should we just wait for ben, or for Bill, and then we'll have quorum, and we just yeah. Okay, oh, there he is. All right, just next door. Yes. And you can do the conference room. Yeah. Of course. Get your setup over here. Oh, okay. Try to so, form out. I didn't want to make you feel outnumbered, but now you want to. It's been a while. And we used to set up over That's there. That's right. That is uncle. Yeah. Put your head. Good to see you. Bill. Yeah. How are you? Good. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's. We're just. For the record, we're just troubleshooting this arrangement because yeah. we have been here in a long time. But we do have this new camera, right. and it's supposed to follow people and then the screens. But this configuration may not be ideal for how that operates. So um, we'll see how it goes. Sure, it's going to be Yeah, I don't remember whether we've actually met in person. I keep that up. Remember, only on the I've Zoom. We've never seen it like in person live. Yeah. This is really a. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been like been talking two years. I saw him yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're good to go. All right. Um, would like to call to order the October 13th meeting of the Capital Projects Advisory Board. And the first order of business is the roll call. Yes. Uh, that's me. So Bill Foster. Here. William Mester. Present. Ben Kaiser. I'm here. Kristen Rutherford. Robert Chandler. Not here. Bruce Johnson. Present. Cynthia Wagner. Not here. Okay. okay. Then in the uh, material that uh, Daniel sent out are the uh, notes from the last minute or meeting. Um, any comments or questions? I just had one uh, question. I was really pleased uh, when we were talking about the enterprise software, the potential for doing the facilities assessments, uh, maybe at the, at the institutional level or the high level, that's fantastic. And my question is, will we be able to possibly share that in different agencies? Uh, because we know that some of our institutions uh, are not able to do this very often. So this could be a very helpful um, tool as we think about it. Uh, I'll, I'll follow that. Um, I did get your email. Uh, and I know it was copied to Jeremy and we'll discuss it uh, and we can maybe talk about what that would look like moving forward. Uh, currently, we're in EIS approval uh, purgatory uh, until we, but we're on our way towards getting uh, something executed. But um, so timing is the, the real issue and how it gets structured uh, contractually. But uh, I think, um, you know, we're, we're figuring that out. So I think the you know, meeting could be arranged with Jeremy. Thank you. Any other? I, I wasn't present, so. Okay. Um, then I would move approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Yeah. Second. There has to. I was. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. So. Honesty or approve? Yeah, yeah approve. with a one exemption. Abstention. 
Okay, so then I guess it's kind of your show, Daniel. Yes. Uh, maybe I'm going to share. Yeah, let's turn on my camera. This is Okay, so um, this is going to be our last meeting for the year. <laughs> uh, we'll reconvene uh, hopefully in January. Uh, so I wanted to give in part an update about what was accomplished, um, what we've been working on, and um, kind of a setup for what the tasks that are uh, sort of following that need to be uh, accomplished before uh, we head into our CPAB season. Um, so, wait a minute, one sec. So uh, just to recap where we're at and uh, our administrative rule update. Uh, as you recall, we were working on that. We over last year. We completed our component of it and then the CPC was completing their component of it and they were married together in one contiguous rule uh, that um, despite being together really created these separate sort of governing uh, structures for uh, the roles and responsibilities of both entities. So just to recap what happened after our last meeting, which was in July, was that we just we did notice of a permanent rule filing that was on August 7th. We had a public hearing on September 20th. Uh, we filed with the uh, Secretary of State's office on 28th and uh, and the Legislative Council uh, and it was the rule was made effective on October 1st, so that is done. So 20th, I assume no feedback on the 20th. I had a hearing and there were some couple of people that were agency folks that that kind of hung on to kind of listen, but there was really no comments. I mean, nobody made any was there to make a comment. So. Um, yeah, I think it's it's uh, we're good to go with that. So I think uh, you know the, the achievement, as I stated, is we have an up-to-date set of rules that provide clear operational duties and procedures that affect both CPAB and CPC. Um, and just uh, it's live on the Secretary of State website, so if we you want to reference it in some way, there it is. I gave it to you in your the email. Um, but there's still some things to do. We have some to resolve. A couple of outstanding procedural issues that were not necessarily uh, we thought it wasn't uh, pertinent to put in the rule, but still pertain to how we do business. Um, we also need to update the CPAB charter. Um, I included the charter in your e your uh, materials. Uh, if you just peruse that even casually, you'll know that it's way out of whack at this point. So it needs to be substantially updated. Um, and uh, we also need to develop a revised statewide facility planning manual that um, guides agencies in uh, preparing their agency facility plans and or presenting projects to both CPAP and CPC. And then of course, prepare materials for agency use uh, in that process. So question for Bill, are you thinking for the charter? Because I know when we did the rules, right? We kind of had a subcommittee, well not kind of, we had a subcommittee and we come back and report to the to the larger yeah. committee. Is that what, what you're thinking for the charter as well? Well, we haven't talked about it, but I think that model would work. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I got. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 
so I, I try to do this in like a narrative way where yeah. exposition we get to a point where um, so just to to you know the implications for CPAB uh, following the rule update is um, by and large CPAB's role and functions remain the same as they are in, are in current practice or something there that it actually just kind of brought the CPAB stuff to how we do business uh, over the past several years. Uh, CPC's role and functions have been clarified and augmented, uh, but really their focus is, is area plan compliance of projects and developing area plans, uh, adopting them. Um, but there are some things that we should resolve. Um, one is, as we discussed last meeting, uh, was how does CPAB treat projects subject to CPC review, which are Salem area projects? Um, and when in the process do CPC review projects reach CPAB? Um, also, what are CPAB's individual project review expectations? Um, that's not something we put in the rule, but it's something we can clarify in our manual. Um, equally, what are the agency presentation expe uh, expectations and what are CPAB's actions? And by actions, I mean uh, having clarity on what your decisions are. Is it acceptance? Is it recommendation? And there's a definition to that to alleviate any kind of ambiguity for members or agency folks, you know, so what that. And, and I think maybe looping back on that front, to what the audit said that kind of fell off the table back in 2020. Well, remind us for the record. Well, it it uh, it addressed you know the whole process with CP with CPAP. But what specifically are you, are you referring to? Just you know to whether we have there were there was a response document that had response to the recommendations mm -hmm. for the most part things were accepted but some not and you know have we implemented those okay and what we're doing okay that's my point okay. fair enough um so i just want to get to back to this salem area project review component which uh you know this is something that i'm we're looping back to, I, I kind of promised that we'd loop back to this because because this is something I know the bill wanted to have resolved and clarified. And, and so CPC has primary review authority over Salem area projects. That's in statute, that's now in rule. Um, uh, there's still this kind of uh, peculiar um, uh, artifact in the statute uh, ORS 2760592, the state's proposals that have been reviewed by the Capital Planning Commission under this section need not be reviewed by the Capital Projects Advisory Board uh, established under 276227. And, you know, I've, very early on, I was contemplating what the significance of this was and how it factors into how we um, deal with the relationship. And, my interpretation is that if you read the language that pertains to um, uh, essentially they're not required, agencies are not required to have their Salem area projects reviewed by CPAB, but the review that is being addressed deals with the criteria in 276059, which pertains to area plan compliance. And that actually makes total sense if there's this separation. CPC uh, does area plan compliance review. CPAB evaluates the capital project. Um, so CP, CPAB may review these projects as part of their agency facility plan review function as the review requirement uh, criteria is different. Right. So it's exactly. Be careful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I'm very comfortable in saying nothing's really changed. We just gave yeah. CPC these clear instructions and we kind of beefed up their significance in terms of uh doing the, the enforcement of of area plan reviews now the question is okay we got the rules figured out we got these duties figured out where does uh the interrelationship come into play in terms of uh cpc and cpab um and why did i have this sorry i kind of hastily added something in there um where it comes into play in the process and 
we can discuss that today, or if this is a subcommittee thing, we can tee that up. But just to kind of pull the, you know, the, the wool off here is just, just. Well, with the exception of Ben, this is a subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is. I mean, I, I, it was fortuitous that, you know, this kind of worked out this way, but um, essentially does, or should CPAB expect projects that are subject to CPC review, their sale area projects, be reviewed by CPC before they get make its way to CPEP? Um, that's the question. And it's kind of a big question because it procedurally it creates a uh, higher expectation of agencies to at least uh, go through that process to get to your process. Um, there's a dependency there. And in many cases, that's a scheduling uh, capacity thing. So, and also, uh, I actually think this works out to the benefit of CPC. But you know, the the uh, the projects may be at a very uh, conceptual stage, so they're reviewing something that maybe like they know kind of what they want to do and where they want to do it and how does it fit within the context of the area plan. But that might be it. The thing is, as you know, the, the former mayor, uh, Mayor Bennett, used to always kind of drill is like we never see these projects early enough only when they get kind of more and more baked and it actually kind of compels agencies to at least show what they're thinking and presenting them much more in advance i mean it may be something where depending on where they're at they may have to come back uh, a couple of times to cpc because uh, of the design review kind of components but at least we would know where what's coming down the pike and they got some input into that so because yeah. at least from my perspective it doesn't make sense for us to be reviewing a project that is not compliant with the area plan true i i i recognize that um the the importance of that uh again i think to me it's like a chicken and egg question yeah you know? it's like as we view capital Right. Mm -hmm. So we have the whole questions of their capital. Like, why we question it, and then and then they at the same time they're spending all kinds of resources trying to design something, but we don't even think they're spending the capital the right way. It's yeah. It's, I, I I think there's always been this kind of. Um, I just think we got to pick one way and just be done with it. But yeah, I I think a lot of agencies, uh, and it's just my my opinion, but you know they they if they are not going to get funding for something. It's not a real project in their mind. I think on some level, it may be something. It's a um, so I think that for them, they don't want to do any kind of. Uh, yeah, spend a lot of resources that they don't have the money. Yeah, this is a, kind of a vicious circle. So I, this is the the conundrum: is yeah. like, do we uh, have them invest their energy in defining something uh, before they know if it's even going to make it through the the budget process, right. or um, is it reverse, where we, we know that it's going to be a real project on some level, but it may not from a uh, from plan uh, compliance perspective may be at issue. But the thing is, if it's a plan compliance, uh, there are mechanisms within that uh, CPC's role to do uh, variances and, and whatnot. Um, but it's whether or not the use is kind of out of context with what the plan says or something like that. So I mean, I'm, I think there's benefits both ways, but, um, you know, in terms of procedurally, uh, you know, what is, we can discuss what the, the board's expectation is, if it's a, something that they would prefer to see projects that have been reviewed by CPC, or if they're comfortable sending projects to the budget process that haven't, but then CPC, I mean, technically, there is this this another statutory artifact that uh, it's not even in the the two seven six uh, statute that it's in the budget statute about that a, a, a capital project cannot go to uh, be a part of the agency request budget if it hasn't been reviewed by the CPC uh, that are subject to review. And I think. Mm -hmm. In, in part, I think that kind of answers the question, but I don't know if that is just like 
an artifact of that hasn't been corrected in the in the statute or um, if that's the expectation. So I guess I have to take it on the the, uh, in the sense that it's it's in statute. So it is the what's the, it's the law, I guess. <laughs> so um, I'll just take your your thoughts on that. But um, I guess I should sort of back up and say this, even though I'm giving a little bit of a presentation. Um, I'm kind of doing this as a, a Q and A because I can then go back, like I've done in the past, with the rules and stuff, and, and kind of develop some frameworks and some content, and then we can just work with that uh, as a, a group to kind of edit it down to get to a point where it's a kind of a revised draft kind of a thing. So um, this is the charter. Um, just to move on a little bit. Um, yeah, this is as you would note that the other component of what we're trying to deal with is, is this charter. But essentially, at this point, uh, or this version, which I don't even know, 2012. Okay, um, that's been a while. So you're saying it might be time for an update? Well, you know, just uh, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, well, there's several things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's 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 not, not even it's not even relevant at this point, and yeah. so it isn't a particularly a, a difficult task to <laughs> replicate the structure of this uh, using updated language and whatnot. Um, but you know, in that effort, uh, it's always worth asking. Um, you know, does this um, provide the kind of uh, Guidance for the board, not only I think now, but in in at least you know perpetuity for members as they come and go um, to know. Yeah, I think my my personal thing is 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 when it says actions um, that we clarify what those actions are and what the implications are in terms of CPAP's role in. You know, making recommendations and how it, it relates to the, the the planning process and whatnot. So, um, I mean, some of this is just very pro forma. What constitutes a quorum? Um, that's not a, a big deal. But um, so my thought was, hey, let's just let's just throw out some questions here, and it'll give us a basis um, to start from. Uh, from where um, you know what your thoughts are, and it doesn't mean that these are these are set in stone, but at least gives us a um, an opportunity to reason really consider um, how we approach this. And so, my first question is like, what is the preferred charter revision process? And that's where we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want Dan to do it, or uh, is this something where uh, we again form some sort of subcommittee? Um, and kind of pack away at this. Uh, we can do it virtually, uh, like we did, um, or whatnot. But at some point, it's it's a matter of just putting content in a document. So I, I sort of recognize that I would do that, and then feed that to the subcommittee to evaluate. And and you know. at least from my take, is it would only be like maybe a couple of meetings. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't see it as being. I think this is a lot less complicated. Yeah. Right? yeah. From what we've been in, yeah. uh, and you know, just quickly, the membership and roles not doesn't align with the new rule, and the thing on public review of area plans should come out. Yeah, that's no longer. <laughs> so, so I mean, those are just two, and then whether procedurally. There needs to be more than is here. Would be at least what I would see. I, I, uh, I mean, just as a cursory kind of uh, review approach for today, it's like, you know, the basic question is what specifically uh, should be added. Um, do you think there's anything that's missing? That might be difficult to answer on the fly, but you know. Uh, it's something we can use uh, to tee up the conversations for the subcommittee meeting. Um, 
one of the things, and this is where it gets a little touchy on CPC versus CPAP, is a significant issue historically with the city of Salem has been whether we're utilizing state property or leasing or what. And I'm not sure we are reviewing um, 10 year leases. What, is there any process with CPC? To review leases? Yeah. No, it's, it's basically what is related to the area plans and the area plans are own properties. And, yeah. uh, but, but the point is that like for instance, Fish and Wildlife went and did their own building yeah. off, not on state owned property where there was state owned property. So, you know, it's, this is where some of that really um, hits the, the road. Well, we, we would consider that a um, outlier scenario that is worth um, contemplating uh, the resolution. I think yeah. that if it's a lease and they're they're coming to the board to present their plan. I think it's it's worth um, drilling down into that on yeah. some level. And and then there's also been this whole thing that actually one of the instances was with OPB years ago, where they um, entered into a lease and then turned around and bought it and avoided bully uh, wages on the construction. So there's, you know, some funny nuances of stuff that can happen. I guess my thought about that is, is we have to consider the scope of what the board is tasked to do. Yeah. Can't resolve everything. Mm -hmm. can't, no. Can't, you know, <laughs> affect uh, prevailing wage laws or whatever. Uh, yeah. But it can affect uh, things within his purview of evaluating a, a lease over 10,000 square feet that's going to be put into an, uh, a budget process and to ask appropriate questions about uh, the agency's intentions and uh, if there's any, I think, uh, implications in terms of community impact or financial terms. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're an advisory board to the director. We're making a recommendation. And that recommendation could be, this should be explored. Okay. I mean, we, as part of this, you, you could create uh, sort of a, a set of, um, and part of the actions, I guess, is, is um, you know, what are, the, what are the fundamental questions we have for uh, leases? It's one thing to say in the rule, if you have a lease over 10,000 square feet, CPAB has to review, but we don't necessarily have any criteria about yeah, yeah. what the review process is. And uh, that is, um, I mean, I kind of had this vision about that, uh, not just that specifically, but about those aspects of things and making the, the planning manual um, sort of the tool that is referred to in the rule that we can kind of tweak that thing yeah. as we need it, but it gets at a little bit um, more constructive level. And uh, but it it takes a process to actually develop it. So that's uh, here we are. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So so I take your point. I think that that's on the table to flesh out whether it's a part of the charter or whether it's part of um, the manual. manual. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's uh, I think the intent is to kind of take away some of the ambiguity, both yeah. in terms of how the board operates and decisions that it's making. Uh, and then you know, how the agencies can actually uh, present something in a meaningful way where it's not, you know, a waste of people's time. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not just rubber stamping. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that term has been used a lot in the past about how, uh, you know, CPAB in previous, you know, iterations, um, perhaps just, you know, didn't have uh, things effectively kind of 
figured out to the point where they're applying this this rigor that um, challenged the projects in a way that yeah. benefited the state. And that was kind of where we decided to uh, turn things around a little bit. Um, so I think that it sounds like that's within your your appetite to at least explore these kind of scenarios and um, requirements or at least um, criteria that we would use to apply to um, some of these things where we don't have any guidance uh, in the past. Yeah, well, I've been expressing some of my own thoughts and backgrounds and whatnot, but what do others think? Is that? No, I think it, I think it's for anybody that comes in here needs to understand what we're asking to, right? So I think the rule book is really what we got to get dialed in. And then I think it would help us a lot more to be more effective in our mm -hmm. decision making. Because I, you know, I know when I first came in, it was like, what? Okay, what? I would ask questions, right? I asked some questions and things. We got some answers, and then we would just like, okay, yeah, um, next, yeah. Presentation. But I think, it, I think for us to do better recommendations to the director, we've got to be able to be more thought provoking. And yeah, otherwise, why do we exist? Right, I agree. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to think about what that criteria is. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if the the CPEP has a a real role in like you need to renegotiate in terms of this lease, yada yada yada. That's that's for yeah, I get, that's a, that's a different a, a bridge too far. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the the soundness of that uh, yes. plan decision, right? right. So when we, when we hypothetical, right? Someone wants to go get a new lease, and you know they have a building that's empty. Like, what are we doing? Right. So that's I think that's incumbent upon us. I think we can challenge that. Yeah. Their, their response may be, well, it's going to take us 10 times more money to actually get that building to be occupied. OK, at least a rational decision making about why they need to go over here and spend money on a lease versus putting more capital in a building that's going to take, you know, 10 years to do and next more dollars than to spend it more wisely on a lease. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, my approach here a little bit is that I'm I'm uh, anticipating that some of these issues are going to be uh, more uh, common because of our portfolio and in the in relationship between lease and own uh, relating to I mean this building is largely empty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you no, know. uh, I think that this this issue is going to be coming up, and it's like. Do we anticipate uh, this just to uh, at least have a plan of, uh, of uh, action and in, in terms of the questions we ask? Well, and I think it's where you know the state's goals about green energy, right? I think those are within our purview mm -hmm. we can be asking, and I think our goals about resiliency, mm -hmm. you know, so government can survive post a cascadia event. I think those are all well in in sustainability, right? And yeah, all within our purview, and I think we just need to. Mm -hmm. To call those out, make sure the agencies know that. Yeah, and I guess again, it's a little bit of this place between CPC and CPAB about you know in this area, are we utilizing state facilities when they're available, whether it's land or buildings, rather than leasing? Yeah, yeah and I think the way. People have told me, like, you control this per, per, the purse strings. Well, yeah. then you have a lot of control. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So don't just think, you know, make your decisions, but, you know, we control the purse strings. On yeah. That. At least recommend, you know, the recommendation of those yeah. purse strings. And, and clearly, overall, the portfolio is changing and has to change just from, mm -hmm. you know, the level of telecommuting and all of these other things that have happened post COVID. Yeah, I, I, um, I think it's always important to kind of reframe uh, and reorient things to, um, you know, the trends. So um, I just want to make sure that's, you know, within uh, your uh, interest to try to uh, think through um, as far as the evaluation criteria that uh, we become more valuable by doing that. And then, uh, you know, uh, just to continue, what are the board actions? I think that um, you know, the, I think what's what's written down doesn't necessarily provide the level of, of uh, 
sufficiency for for helping people uh, members to um, know what they're what they're deciding you know uh, what what are, they, what are they recommending is there something where it's a little bit more um, formulaic and um, also I think uh, you know I have this in the other yeah um, So if we, we capture that, at least in a charter, that, that gives some sort of uh, baseline for uh, how uh, the, the board can approach their duties in kind of a uniform way as a, you know, like, like you're a judge at the Olympics. I don't know. Um, yeah. You've done the compulsories. So next year. <laughs> so in terms of the planning manual revision, um, I mean, this is like a full redo, um, but yeah, I think the key questions are what are what outputs uh, does the board prefer to see from agencies? This is, I think, the perennial or, or biennial uh, question I always ask is like, you know, we've had these workbooks and such, and it's just I always get like the moan of the, you know, but what, yeah. You know, the relevance of those workbooks um, <laughs> has been diminishing by the by the year because uh, the system that generated it doesn't exist. So uh, we're getting to this point where we can kind of reinvent mm -hmm. something, but uh, there has to be informed by the people at the, the CFO's office, LFO, and then our own shop to know that um, here are the outputs that they need to inform the process. Uh, and here's how we can procure the information to make sure those outputs uh, are achievable. And then uh, what do we want to see from the agency that kind of reports those uh, you know, outputs? And um, is it uh, a presentation? Is it uh, a memo? Is it something? Is it a, a, a dashboard? What tells the story? And what is the story that you would kind of expect from agencies? Um, I think I'm, I'm in having to be kind of the the, the quarterback with with these uh, agencies and getting these materials in and in of sufficient uh, com completion. Um, you know, I'm, I tend to err towards the simplicity part. Um, and but it has to be meaningful and by that i mean there has to be something backing it up but is there are there these sort of proxy measures or elements that we can use to um, assess how an agency is doing because in statute and in the rule we don't define what it is that we're uh, specifically asking for we deal with things like affordability and effectiveness and efficiency and um, but those are abstract terms that we've applied measures to, like a facility condition index um, uh, or you know, dollar per square foot. But by and large, sometimes it, it isn't, it's hard to create an, a one size fits all kind of measure for agencies that have completely uh, diverse uh, business models and, and portfolio uh, makeup. So I think this is really the next step before this budget process begins is is um, we're going to have to muscle through another biennium of, of uh, just making do um, until we can get some more concrete data and manage. Are we? I just, you both, well, I, I don't know the answer to this question, but are we unique as Oregon's, Oregonians to this approach? Do other states have a similar process that we can just leverage? Well, uh, other states have other processes. In some cases, I think they're probably more um, robust or uh, maybe even less so. But um, is there anything that we can, like a network that we can leverage to take the best of the of those that processes and then make it serve it to be ours? Well, I mean, instead, I think, of, instead of trying to recreate, right, or trying to create from right, scratch, right. I'm just trying to be efficient. This yeah. is a good question. Can I add some thoughts yeah, on that? Please do. Because uh, we've been looking from higher ed, we've been looking at like Michigan, 
Tennessee, Colorado, uh, those states follow similar processes. And so there's a lot to be gained both uh, kind of in the things that you've mentioned so far, like the, the green energy, the resiliency, uh, the optimization of space, uh, the data driven, the formulas, um, plus the linkage to the, the resources. I think we're doing a better job linking to uh, strong teams that we already have, like what you're doing coming uh, with the Enterprise Asset Management Group, that whole group. And so what we're seeing in other states is they're doing similar processes. We've taken snapshots of these several states. They're using the same kind of rubrics. And there is, there is no one universal, mm -hmm. but all of them are anchored on a strategic alignment and state goal alignment. So I think the answer and the principles really go back to what are the state goals and clearly like the green, uh, the data driven, uh, the facility condition index, some of the basics are already there and it's consistent. And mm -hmm. that's what we're following. And that's mm -hmm. what the board uh, yeah. could, could and, consider. And I think too though, there are parallel paths because there's the higher ed network. Then something that the department used to be involved with was a National Association of State Facility Administrators, which was state government kind of purview. And, you know, we had interactions with numbers of states, uh, particularly Washington. Um, I mean, I. I this is my commentary. I think that mm -hmm. by and large, we are doing the things that we need to do. Uh, it may not be packaged uh, as efficiently or effectively, which is why it kind of gets to where um, I want to try to drive things. Is is it um, produced in a way where it translates? I think that there's some integration between um, things that not, aren't specifically within CPAB's purview, but are related to facilities that are uh, a topic of potential discussion on the administrative level about how we, we work in sustainability. There's some recent legislation here about how we track sustainability and energy, all the energy stuff and um, that's gonna be coming down the, the road in terms of uh, implementing and how we capture that data. And um, so I think there's an opportunity on the horizon, but I think it's one of those things where if the board has uh, something of interest, I think it's fair to raise their raise their interest to uh, you know the appropriate people, like uh, you know people in the CFO, mm -hmm. LFO, to say we think that this. But generally, it's their process to drive, yeah. and so it's a matter of, of ensuring that. They are getting what they need to inform the legislative process, the budget development process on the governor's side, uh, but also, you know, to have a full kind of spectrum analysis of these projects to ensure that it's the right thing. And so I think there's work to do there. It's just, um, you know, I'll, I'll, you know I'll just that if, there, if there's an existing manual, like let's start with that existing manual that and then we can just update it to maybe two like merge with ours because I think you're right. I think we have all these pieces. Yeah. Honestly, I think it takes a lot of time to like write it, right? Yeah. I think it takes a lot of time to organize it. But if there's something we can just use as a good base, it may save us a lot of time, it may save you a lot of time. One of the other things that when I had much to do with it, I was always quite protective of is not putting undue burden on agencies. They're busy, they've got a lot of stuff. And unless we're really going to use the data constructively, yeah. why yeah, make fair. them assemble it? Fair, but I, I, I think we do, I think we, I think we also owe them 
like what to expect when they come in yeah, and what they need absolutely. to do. So I think you know, yeah. it's a, look, we don't need to, I agree, we don't yeah. need to add a lot of burden, but we need to give them an idea of what we're trying to do. And I think we've done that. I think it's like, I think we can now improve it, right? And I do think what you were saying earlier, right? Like these other aspects, I think we, we should be clear that we are looking for these other things now. Yeah. I think part of the, the, the a little bit of the issue um, is there's, there are these components of this process that has been presented to you, but are actually represent different um, things to different entities. So you see like you get these uh, these forms with those workbooks. Um, the forms uh, that agencies would fill out and sometimes they had difficulty filling it out because they're doing it three or four months before they would normally submit their agency request budget. That's really for the budget analysts. Um, they have this big uh, spreadsheet of facilities that they're going and they're trying to add their costs or whatever to, but that's really a data management thing related to maintaining the statewide inventory. So mm -hmm. you have this budget process that's in statute, you have this uh, statewide inventory that's in statute, and then there's like what CPAP does, which is review these agency facility plans. And the decision, you know, years and years ago was to try to align all those where um, the inventory is being updated, they're producing the budget documents, and uh, they're having something to present to uh, the board. Um, but it's a difficult thing. <clears throat> I think timing-wise, it, it, it kind of... I personally think it's a burden to agencies to expect, especially the agencies that have to go first. Um, so I guess the question is, what is the, 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 the CPAB wants to see? Is it um, for what their role is? Is it having kind of a, a presentation that shows this is how we're doing, this is what we're proposing, uh, this is, you know, these sort of elements. It's less about, um, you know, seeing the details in the inventory thing, which is, um, you know, maybe a little bit more fine grain that's and it's uh, valuable to you, and then, or the having to have budget documents that all of that could be summarized. There's only like a few components of those budget documents that are actually, I think, important for the conversations that you have with the agencies at the time that you have them, which is during these presentations. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I mean the spreadsheets that we would get, right? Yeah. We're, we're not, I didn't see too many people opening up those spreadsheets and going by line item and asking a question. Yeah, I, I think, uh, <laughs> so I, I mean, the, that those components need to be done on some level, yeah. whether or not- Because yeah, you gotta bring those numbers, you, you gotta bring yeah, yeah. those numbers up so we can understand the picture but, of it, right? I, I think underlying some of this is maybe a disconnect with the agencies in that I think many of us feel decisions on facilities are long term. They need to be thoughtfully uh, prepared and looked at and not on the spur of the moment. And there is a statutory requirement for six year plan that I don't think many agencies give serious thought to. So, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise for a project to come up if it's on that six-year plan. Well, yeah, and the six-year plan, uh, largely how it's, I think, exercised is that it's in those budget documents, you will you, you yeah. list potential projects, right, two or three by any amount, yeah. which, um, you know, doing this for, you know, a couple of agencies over a long time, um, you know, those things fall off uh, at various points. So because it, it is a plan, right? But I I think for me, like, I want to start with seeing more of like, where have you been? How have you done? Where are you now? And where are you headed? Yeah. So that's kind of what I, I think what I'm going to try to listen for more. Yeah. So it's so like, you know, are we executing well? Or are we not? Mm -hmm. And I think that raises more questions for us. Yeah. Well, I think the one thing that you have to consider, um, I'm kind of editorializing again. I got to. Um, I think what you have to consider, though, is 
there has to be room for uh, exceptions. And because there may be a situation where funding comes up yep. each short term and they have yep. an opportunity yep. and they're just trying to go through the hoops yep. because they got to spend this. Yeah. Yeah. And or emergencies. But I think the, the the response from the board, in my opinion, should be, well, um, yeah, that sounds like an opportunity. Um, let's discuss how you're going to make the most out of this or if this makes sense. Um, I, I think that's fair. I, I, yeah. but I don't think anything's black and white, Daniel. Yeah, but I just I think we've got to have some mm -hmm. structure and say, you know, like, look, the world is changes every day, right? So there's all kinds of things that happen in this world that change plans. So you know, I don't know why this but, the agency would be in any different way. But that's not an excuse not to vote. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. So um, mm -hmm. so I guess just to pick up on the slide here. Um, so we need to figure out what what the outputs are. I think the first part of that, like I said, is I need to have some input from um, the powers that be about what they they kind of want uh, driving the conversation, um, and ensure that we're we're fulfilling that role. Um, and then when in the process, do the I think we kind of I think we kind of concluded that we want to see those reviewed uh, before they come to CPAB. To the best of their ability, mm -hmm. um, and then um, so if there's this other thing, uh, CPAB's individual project review expectations. So we never really set like you must do this or it's got to look like this. When we have AEU reviewing an agency's facility plans, you would say, okay, that's kind of a big project. Why don't you come back in August and we'll, we'll you you can present on that. But we don't really have any kind of guidance for that or some threshold that says, OK, for projects that are over $10 million or $50 million, we're going to have uh, a much more deep dive review expectation for this. Uh, I, I it, thought we did. Well, we never, I don't think we really implemented it in a, in a structured way where it was like part of the manual. I think it was just uh, we, we flirted with the idea of using a threshold, but or do we make it discretionary? And the thing is, if it's discretionary, um, it doesn't give agencies enough, I think, guidance in terms of preparing themselves for the yeah. potential of needing to present a project. Um, so if you say like, or I don't know, I mean, we can come up, you you can come up with something that would say like, here uh, are projects that sort of fit this. Uh, you know, in these conditions, we want to have come back um, and do an individual presentation to be reviewed. Um, and here's what there's going to be reviewed on, which is you know not going to be what CPC reviews it on. If it's a if it's a sailing project, but it's whether or not it's a capital component of it. So I think that well, I, I the point me mentioning that is that. The manual is something where it's it's yeah. sort of the contract. It's sort of the, the thing that you use to refer to, and that's what's been substantively missing in these conversations. Well, that keeps us honest too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I well, and I would have to refresh my memory, but I thought we had sort of a three-part organization of you know the um, condition assessment and you know deferred maintenance and new projects of a certain magnitude and they each had their own piece and we reviewed them kind of sequentially and independently but there are there are there's been plenty of instances in plenty of years where we've accepted facility plans from agencies that had some projects and we would tell one agency we we want you to come back and present on this project in other agencies, we've said, sounds good, looks good. Yeah. And so I think yeah. in terms of uniformity um, yeah. and consistency, and is, there, is there a criteria that yeah. we use? Yeah, and, and I think there's a sensitivity that we need to set the rules at the beginning of the process. Exactly. And so <laughs> the, like often, about this right now. Yeah. the window is yeah, the window's really uh, narrow uh, by the time we get to trying to do yeah. that. 
but it's not fair to, you know, revise the rules midstream. I agree. Yeah. So, and this manual should include a, like you produced for in the past, like our little cheat sheet, our little grade cheat sheet, like, yeah, it, it should include that as well, right? So people should see like, okay, this is what the members have in front of them and how they're, they're guiding their conversation, their thought process. Yeah, I mean, most of the work that I've done prior was to elevate the board right. and make sure the board had <clears throat> tools. But the agencies, I was just relying on them to maintain consistency with that workbook thing because there was so much invested in that. Right now, we're at a point where we can kind of uh, reevaluate and re um, revise, I think, things across the board and do it more iteratively on both ends to ensure that there's a great alignment and there's a it's it's simpler but also more effective in telling the story and uh, giving everybody what they need. Well, I think you're hearing consensus. I don't think anybody's disagreeing. Okay. Yeah. Any any thoughts, Ben? Oh, unmute. unmute. <laughs> You need to unmute. Yeah, no, I, I thank you guys. It's good to hear where this is all going. I really liked what was said previously about where have you been, where are you now, and where are you going? Kind of tied to a list of fiscal resiliency, energy, construction costs, seismic, and future planning. I think if the, if we had kind of an outline to for these folks to come in with and for us to kind of framework, I think that's what I hear we're all trying to get at. Uh, and and then and then as been spoken about whether or not that's um, sent forward to the director as an acceptance or or a non-acceptance, and that's what I've always been curious about: what a non-acceptance means going forward to the director, uh, and what, as as it says here, is not a governing body of a public body. But I've just been curious about that through this whole process. But I I think the the what's been discussed so far is exactly in the right direction. Well, I mean, in, and maybe talking briefly about some specific examples, I think there was a proposal to build a parking structure, mm. and we thought the timing was bad. Mm. And basically, that's what we said. And, and, and I think it's proven to be absolutely accurate. Yeah, it was taken off the table, I think. Yeah. But, um, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think um, so. I think we're all in alignment, at least in terms of how we proceed. Um, with the caveat, I have to say this on the administrative side that the the <laughs> the bosses have the sure. You know, it has to it has to be kosher with uh, you know CFO and all that stuff. Um, well, Daniel, do we need to hear a little of that? Uh, because then it would seem to me if we have sort of what our input is, then we need to align what the agencies are giving us to that input. And um, and it seems like this is quick and easy. Yeah, I think- And the other is more complicated. Yeah, it is more complicated, but I think, you know, there's always a couple of ways you can approach this uh, planning manual thing. I think one is, uh, you know, the CFO's office could say, here's the shape of the box. Stay in this box. Yeah. Um, or we say, here's what the board thinks is interesting, and they kind of recommend that we um, kind of push these uh, buttons. Uh, what do you think? What do you like? What do you not like? And we trim it down. So it's either... Mm -hmm. Big Bang, or mm -hmm. you have this much to your, your thumbnail sketch um, mm -hmm. in this box. Um, so I, I that's I just want to tee up this conversation to kind of get the the wheels going. But I think there's you know stuff I need to do with the appropriate people to kind of see what um, yeah, and their preferences in terms of getting the outputs they need. And, and we haven't talked about it, but there's been some significant staff changes. There has been some staff changes, yes. Um, but do you know, is there anything that we can do to help in that conversation? Or uh, I mean, do we need to make a formal decision here so you can say, hey, this is what the board's asked? 
No, I don't think we're making any formal decision. I think that this is just um, this is an engagement here and an engagement of just trying to kind of feel out um, how you'd like to be involved in. I mean, I always try to uh, get people involved in uh, helping to create their own uh, you know, opportunities to inform the process. And um, but there are limitations to that, you know, and, and this is a you know, it's government. So there's sort of, sort of rules and there's there's a hierarchy and pecking order. And um, so we have to appeal to that. And, you know, CPAP is one of those things where it just it works for the, the the director. So, you know, there's a there's a there's a final boss level. Right. Uh, right. Um, but I think that the process is enriched by having uh, the your diverse opinions and knowledge um, sort of incorporated in that because the your ability to kick the tires makes ensures that that transaction between what the output is to the the, the budget folks um, is you know full information uh, very meaningful and is not um, a waste of your time um, I think the last bullet here, I'm just going to lob this out here because it's kind of heretical, but um, I've always kind of questioned it myself. Are there is are there situations where the board would consider an exemption, such as I'm a very small agency. Yeah, I own a building, but I'm not doing anything to that building, I'm not asking for any capital. Do I need to present to make a presentation and present to the board or can I just send a memo and I get a pass? To me, that seems perfectly reasonable. Okay. So I let me offer yeah. a counter to yeah, you. Yeah, sure. I, I, I wonder in, in that hypothetical that are they being thoughtful in their planning? All right. So, so the, yeah, you know, it's, it's going back to my past, mm -hmm. present, future. Like, what is their future strategy? Or are they kicking a can that? Is going to go off a cliff. So I, that's yeah. only that's why I'm, I'm. It makes sense to me. I hear it. I understand. Yeah. And it's like that would be like the one thing. Like if, if they went through the memo, then I would like to have in that memo like, and here's our plan for the future. But we have no expectations for this yeah. plan and to and, ask for anything. And that a pass isn't necessarily perpetual. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but that would be my only thing. Is that I was. Yeah. I would not. I wouldn't want the memo just to say, "Hey, we're not asking for anything this year. Thank you very much." Okay, you're good. I'd like to say, okay, you're not asked for anything, and we have a plan, and that's to come to you next year. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, this kind of like threads a very uh, interpretive needle uh, in the statute about what an agency facility plan is and what is presenting it to the board. Uh, yeah. It's just submitting that, or if it is a full scale presentation. Um, we've tried to do the presentation thing because we, we want the board to be fully informed of what about agency does. <laughs> how it's doing it and to answer those questions. But um, I'm always mindful of that, you know, for these smaller agencies that just are in status quo mode for year after year after year that. Um, and maybe they shouldn't be. That's my question, right? If there are in status quo. Year well, let's year. talk a specific example. Aviation. They have great need and they never figured out how to fund it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean that's. I mean the, the not to pick on individuals, but I yeah. mean uh, uh, that and, and like PERS, you yeah. know, they got one building and they yeah. take care of it, and that's that's kind of it. But it could change from biennium to biennium, but by and large, when they're they're in a status quo mode for the next two to four years, um, you know is. I mean, I'm just I'm just offering this as oh, like something that's in, in my back of my mind at one point. Yeah, and um, Daniel, maybe it's an application process that they give a preliminary, and we either agree or don't agree, and that they would come back for a presentation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you know, if if it seems like everything's kind of straight. Um, and nothing's happened in that biennium, maybe we give them a buy. But if it doesn't seem like that's that clear, we may not. Okay. 
Okay. You know, which I'm just I'm just throwing that out as a possibility. I think that makes sense. I mean, I just I think people sometimes they they, they try to do the right thing and it's like, okay, yeah. we'll just handle it here and not worry about it. Whereas maybe the right thing is to like here's where I'm at, and then let us help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And not you know not raising things is not always the right thing to do. Right. I mean, they have to submit something. Whether or not they need to show up on such and such date and go through yeah. a ten minute slideshow um, to simply come away with the conclusion we're not doing anything, um, you know that's. We, we, I just figure that's that's a fair game to at least um, think about. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I think there's something there. It's just I just mm -hmm. don't want it just to be like a. Memo done. I, mean, I, I think we're still going to have some questions. They have to, and so they have to be addressed in that memo or the application process. Like that's, well, we can just uh, put that in the the, um, the topic bin to be considered, and I have to see if that would fly with. Yeah. Well, that's also is. Yeah. Does that meet their expectations? Yeah. Um. So let's see. That's kind of all I had in terms of um, just having this kind of free flow conversation. Um, I think Amy will work together to kind of figure out when we can. Uh, it may be we'll have to like figure out what works time wise because of the holidays and all that stuff. So it may not be like an exact day. Maybe we just find out what works. And if it's just um, the same three people, uh, we can talk about it. But I, I'm going to. You're talking about with the committee. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So I just want to check in with my folks to see if that's the, the route that seems appropriate. And um, I think for some component of it, you know, what the board wants to see, the board should have input into defining that. But um, but it is also a, a, a technical document that needs to have some kind of um, certain structure to it. So, um, so that's all I've got. Speaking of meetings, do we? So it's very helpful to have this already planned out as, as far in advance as you can. Do we have any idea about next year's schedule? Uh, well, we'll have a quarterly meeting in January, and then um, depending on that invite hasn't gone out yet, right? No. Yeah. So all I'm saying is, my ask is that it, mm -hmm. you get all the meetings for the year as soon as you can and get them on my calendar. It is very helpful. Yeah, I, I, what we could do is just do set up monthly meetings from January until September. And then if we don't need you need February, back if you don't need it, yeah. we don't need February or March. But sometimes there's these things where we're trying to solidify yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's the helpful. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that aligns perfectly with the agency request budget timeline. Yeah, because all the agencies have to, or at least we put out the call to the universities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the colleges that we would like their package. We send them the in, yeah. invite, it's kind of like the bogey. We send out, we need your proposals by April, and then we, we block out every month time to like consult, offer uh, technical advice. And just having that, and I'm sure Amy's going to help us on that. Thank you very much. We appreciate your <laughs> contribution. It's so helpful to have that kind of uh, known time. That way we can Mm -hmm. uh, expect that we'll be contributing somehow, some way during those hours. Yeah, uh, I think that's good. Yeah, so that'll be our approach. It's just to do um, monthly meetings, um, at least till September. Um, yeah, great. Yeah. And we'll see if we have some sort of follow up. I know that you, you guys kind of like to know what the, goes into the governor's budget. Um, that's sort of like a November thing. Um, so we can maybe move the quarterly meeting that we would normally have in October to then or something, but. Um, Bill, your intention is to make them in person? Well, that was not my call. <laughs> no, I'm trying to, I am trying to get this as normal as possible, uh, but. I like uh, being in person. It's actually nice to, to see. Yeah. Again, yeah. So. But I, I know that, you know, so, somebody so. like Ben, it may be difficult to get away all the time. So yeah. I want to create this hybrid um, thing and. Uh, 
Because it's yeah. easier to get a quorum yeah. if we have. Yeah. I'm sure sometimes I'm going to have to call them as well. So that'd be yeah. great. And, so, and I, news to me, but Bill lives in Salem, <laughs> as do I. So. You in Salem? I, I live in Salem. Bruce. Oh, Bruce. Oh, Bruce. Bruce. I, sorry. I, that's right. Said the wrong name. That's right. Well, that's, I didn't know I had a house here. No, no, I do. It's just we had a conversation and I just said the wrong name. That's right. That's good. So that is uh, all I've got for my part of the agenda. So you're, um, I don't think we have any. Any, any thoughts from anyone else? Any? Well, it, one thought on the, the subgroup. If we don't have a, a need for the whole group to meet on those designated monthly meetings, maybe that's where we can uh, do it, do mm -hmm. work uh, on the subgroup mm -hmm. as needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, we had at one point um, piggyback. Yeah. Yeah, we had this meeting. Yeah. We stayed on. Yeah. 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 That, Which, works, that works beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Because then we already know about it and we can yeah. plan for it. So. Yeah. yeah. Less interruption on the calendar. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Well, if not hearing anything else or anything for the good of the order, um, I would declare us adjourned. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good to see everybody. See you, Ben. Too, ben. You have all of that? All right. <laughs>